It's been confirmed that Parliament will host an urgent debate about electricity tariffs on the 3rd of September, which is Wednesday next week. That's when that is going to be debated. Is anything going to come out of that debate? Are we going to see some practical measures being implemented which will reduce the price of electricity from its current highs? Not so sure about that. Um, a media release from the DA earlier today calling on NURSA to provide urgent clarity on its electricity tariff determination methodology following, in the words of the statement, the regulator's shocking admission that the ongoing electricity affordability crisis has been exacerbated by tar- tariff hikes based on, quote, a mistaken interpretation of the law. In Schlantla Gumerde, the head of electricity regulation at NURSA, conceded that they have been using an inappropriate pricing methodology which is not founded in the Electricity Regulation Act but rather on the repealed 1987 ESCOM Act. And in that same media statement, uh, Kevin Milam of the DA says, Conservative estimates point out that between 2007 and 22, NURSA-approved ESCOM tariffs went up by 653%. Inflation up by 129%. So electricity prices in excess of five times the rate of inflation. So, Chris Yelland, energy analyst, what do we make of all of this? What, What is the future direction of electricity prices? Continually upwards, but perhaps at a slightly reduced rate? What do you think can be done? Well, first of all, I must say that the statements uh, that appeared in the Sunday Times uh, attributed to uh, uh, Mr. Schlanschak-Gumedi, the, the electricity regulator, I found absolutely astounding. And uh, he's basically saying that, uh, you know, NERSA has uh, mistaken its uh, mandate, and has a wrong methodology, etc. Well, this man has been hurt these matters about electricity pricing and 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 and, and nurses uh, you know uh, determinations have been tested in court several times and never has it been said that the nurses methodology uh, you know are mistaken in law what it has said <laughs> is that that nurse has wrongly implemented its own methodology. It hasn't said the methodology is wrong. It said the way in which NERSA is implementing its own methodology in terms of the law, you know, is, is, is at fault. And, and, and there have been several judgments against NERSA uh, in this regard. So for him now to come out and say that, uh, you, you know, that the, the methodology, uh, you know, is, is flawed and doesn't comply with the law, I find that astounding because it has been tested in law several times. Um, having said that, uh, you know, your question is what can we expect for the, uh, the price trajectory uh, going forward? Well, it's, uh, it's a very controversial subject. I, I was at a media briefing today at ESCOM. Uh, where they presented the summer plan, and I asked the question, you know, are you still determined, uh, you know, to submit your uh, your application for a 40% increase, uh, you know, on the 1st of April next year? It's actually a 36% increase plus a further 4%, uh, which is a clawback from the regulator and clearing account. But the net effect is a 40% price increase. That is what Eskom wants. So on the one hand, you know, I know, we all know that the price of electricity, especially for the poor, is truly unaffordable. Uh, that's part of the reason why you have this uh, high levels of theft and non-payment, uh, why municipalities are unable to collect the money from uh, residents, and why they cannot pay, uh, you know, ask them for the electricity. So there's a massive problem, yet ask them a, a calmly proceeding on the basis that they're putting in an application for a further 40% increase. Well, but, I mean, they, I they, they argue that they have to operate on a cost recovery basis. So they're exactly, saying exactly. we are under recovering at the moment. That's right. And in, they say, in, yeah, in order for us to have a healthy balance sheet, sorry, but yeah. this is what we have to ask. Well, there's two sides to this. On the one hand, uh, you know, if they're not uh, covering their costs, they can either put the price up or they can reduce their costs. <laughs> and, uh, 
uh, it seems to me that Eskom's only solution, uh, you know, to uh, to the problem is, is to put its price up. It's not to cut its costs. It's not to sell assets. It's not to rearrange its business. Uh, but it, it just says my prices are, are not cost reflective. I must put the prices up. I say that perhaps you should be putting the costs down. So, uh, um, how, how, uh, sorry to interrupt, you, but how possible is that? I mean, obviously, to reduce the headcount and to reduce the headcount of the more highly paid executives, I'm not sure all of them have important roles to play. But one that's one way to do it. But in in South Africa of 2024, with the unemployment figures that we have, I'm not sure that it's politically possible to reduce the headcount to the point where it would make a meaningful impact on the cost structures of ESCOM. So, uh, or, or maybe you think they should bite the bullet and, bullet and do that. Or do you see other areas where they could make meaningful cost savings such that they could significantly reduce their request to NURSA from the 40% increase they're asking for? Well, look, there's three main cost drivers at Eskom, and one has to look at them uh, in turn. The first is primary energy. There's primarily, primarily coal. So they need to reduce their coal costs uh, with other uh, lower-cost alternatives like renewable energy. That's the first point. The second uh, major cost uh, driver is uh, a salary, staff remuneration, and uh, it's widely uh, accepted that Eskom staff are very well paid, and secondly, that they are overstaffed. Okay, so they have to do something about that. The third main cost driver is uh, finance costs. They have to reduce their debt. Uh, they're paying huge amounts of interest, uh, you know, and uh, debt repayments, uh, and, and uh, those finance costs are a, a big part of Eskom's cost structure. Um, and, 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 uh, and, and so they have to look at how to do now. How do you do that? Well, I'm sorry to say, but you have to start selling some assets. You have to start, uh, uh, you know, maybe raising capital on a stock exchange in order to reduce it and increase equity. At the moment, all it's doing is it's getting the taxpayer to bail it out all the time. Uh, and and, and the, uh, so uh, these, these are the very hard choices that it has to make. If it was a normal business, Eskom would go out of business tomorrow because it's, it cannot even pay 50% of its uh, debt finance costs uh, you know, from its net operating income. It has a, a, you know, it has a 50% uh, uh, debt uh, ratio to income, uh, net income ratio. So that, I mean, it's like if you had a bond on your house and your, your bond repayment every month was twice as high as your net income for the month. You, you can't afford to service your debt. That's where Eskim is at at the moment, and the only way you can service this debt uh, is through bailouts from the shareholder. But there are ways in which you can reduce debt. You, you can sell some assets and you can raise capital um, you know, in the financial markets through, uh, you know, through listing on the stock exchange. But these are politically unacceptable yeah. Uh, choices uh, that they just not well. Then you you got to uh, if, if you're not prepared to take the hard decisions, uh, you have to face the consequences. Energy analyst Chris Yelland. Chris, thanks very much indeed. So there'll be plenty of hot air generated at that debate on Wednesday next week. But will anything meaningful come out of it in terms of, if not reducing? the current level of electricity prices, then keeping increases much more in line with inflation.